What's up, y'all? <laughs> we back for episode two, season two of the O'Reilly Show. And on the O'Reilly Show, we're going to bring you content directly from us student athletes. You're going to be able to engage with us using the comments below on social media. Make sure to subscribe to the Players Lounge. Today, we're at the Graduate Hotel with some very special guests. I'll let them introduce themselves, yes, starting indeed. on this side. Yeah, so I'm Caleb Perry. I'm currently a sophomore here. I play on the football team. I live in Georgetown, Kentucky. I'm Jordan Thomas. I'm on the football team. I play defensive back, and I'm a sophomore. Peace and beat. Chris Walker, I'm an old head. Used to play here in 2007 <laughs> to 10, uh, but I'm the FCA chaplain here on campus. I was yes, going to say. Where are you from? <laughs> Beat me if it's all going to I was going to say, yeah, he's not a player. <laughs> but it kind of goes into the theme of our episode. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be talking about, like, being an athlete in our faith. But first, we're going to talk about the Super Bowl, because that just yes, happened indeed. yesterday. Yeah. First yeah. initial thoughts, gut reaction, because I'm sad. I was going for the Niners. Me too. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah, there with you. Were? Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with you. Oh, was going for the Chiefs, but we were watching it together, so Big there's dubs. kind of some. You were too, one. I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah we saw your dubs. text in the group, me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you can't go against Pat. He's like, how about the Chiefs? That's what I'm trying to tell you. You can't go against Pat. I just, like, really love, can. like, the heart. The, for the 49ers have a swag and a heart for them, that I'm just like. That's what's up. It was a great game. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was a good defensive game. game. Yeah. I'll it say was, that. It was a good And it came down to the wire. I wouldn't have it any other way. When it's time to win, Patty Mahomes. Let Patty spin. Let Patty I don't know why the 49ers took the ball first. I thought that was insane. Did you see what they came out with today, though? Like, mm -hmm. saying, like, the players didn't know. Mm -hmm. Didn't like, know the rules. Yeah, they yeah. were saying they didn't know the new overtime rules. Mm. The, yeah. the players? The players, that's what they were saying. That, wow. But a Chiefs dude came back and was like, we get, like, taught about it before yeah. the game. Mm -hmm. mm. Was it, like, an official statement? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I've never heard of that. That's what they were saying. Yeah, it saying. came across my ESPN. Yeah. But mm. Tragic. Mm. Over time, you still the Can't first person it. to score. Mm. It now used to both, be the first person And that, I think that's more fair, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah, it's way yeah. fair. But yeah. overall, I enjoyed the game. What about the halftime performance? Oh, oh, yeah, it was smooth. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to start. It, like, it started a little slow. It did. Yeah. And I was it like, did. dang, I can barely hear bro. And then yeah. you start, <laughs> <laughs> bro started dancing. And then Alicia Keys popped out. Yeah, yeah Alicia, Alicia Keys. And then I was like, okay, it's kind of cooking up a little bit. Then he got a little close, and I was like, and that was my wife. I, I don't know how I feel about that personally, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The halftime show was for people my age. No, like, y'all yeah. yeah. really, weren't really vibing like we yeah. was vibing. No, no, I was no, vibing. I was, I was we vibing. Were vibing. We were no, vibing. No, we was vibing Listen, for sure. Er, Usher was like that dude. Yeah. Right? And then he brought Lil John. Lil John. Yeah. Lil yeah. Yeah. Lil 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 like, that, that was real college for me. It was <laughs> just one college. song. That one song that I wish they had to play, Lovers and Friends. Oh, yeah. That. Uh -oh. There was a couple that I wish she yeah, would play. But I think, like, we grew up on, like, the yeah, mm -hmm. and that's ours, but we've gone slowly into old Usher. Yeah, so I really right. appreciated yeah, sure. that part. Yeah. Yeah. But I enjoyed the halftime show. Good job. The game was spectacular. I would rather it have been that close mm -hmm. than a blowout. Yeah, like, I even do, if I my team lost, like, that game has so much riding on it, just make it a close no, game. No, for real. Yeah, for real. But, but the real reason you guys are here is because you guys are athletes that have strong faith. Mm -hmm. And if you guys could each just explain like your journey with faith and like your to getting to this point in college mm -hmm. and then we'll break it down even more. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, so I guess I'll start. Uh really, you know, I kinda grew up in a Christian household. You know, my family's always went to church. My grandma's a big advocate for us to go in the church. So, you know, going to black church is, you know, and everything. <laughs> Being there for two and a half hours, <laughs> <laughs> hands on the wall and everything, for praise so, the Lord. For you so, know, for so, so. That's kind of what I grew up with, and then obviously I moved to Kentucky when I was about eight years old, and you know, kind of followed it there, and then you know, kind of met FCA through sports in middle school and high school. Uh, I would say like a big, you know, like turning point for me and my faith though was like when my dad had his heart surgery mm -hmm. in my uh, my ninth grade year, actually that December. My dad had randomly gone to the hospital, you know, saying he's kind of felt a weird bubbly sensation up his back. My mom was like, just go, because she worked at the hospital. Oh, wow. And the doctor was like, if you don't get emergency heart surgery in the next, like, 30 minutes or something, he's like, you're going to, your aortic will, like, rupture, and you're going to bleed wow. out and die wow. internally. So that was like, I was actually in a basketball tournament at that time. Mm -hmm. I remember just, like, getting the news after the game and not knowing how to feel. It's kind of like one of the surreal things is, like, you hear other people, like, going through, and it's just like, wow. But, like, for, like, someone like my dad, mm -hmm. like, yeah. really, like, challenged me. Like, I just remember, like, going and crying, like, a good bit, like, not knowing how to feel, like, not knowing if my dad was going to be there and, like, how that will affect, like, my future of my parents and my family wow. and especially my mom, you know, because they've been through so much. Mm -hmm. So 
But, you know, he's here with us now, and he's yeah, doing well. That's so That's great. And I've always been thankful for him since then. And obviously when I got here at uh, Tennessee, you know, like Seawalk and all those guys, mm -hmm. you know, it's like a family. Mm -hmm. You know, I can trust on them. I can lean on them. They're like my inner circle. Yeah. You know, and they just keep developing me to be like the best man I can be in my faith mm -hmm. and as an athlete. Yeah. So. Wow. Yeah. That's Thank awesome. you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Sure. Yeah, sorry to spill all that. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's what we want, bro. That's, that's good. good. Um, yeah, I have a similar story to Caleb. Uh, I grew up in a Christian household, and grandma, mother forced me to go to church. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to though because I, I loved being around uh, my church family and my friends that I made there. We shared the same. Uh, struggles, um, passions. Mm -hmm. I would say uh, we were in, into sports a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that kept us out of doing bad stuff mm -hmm. and all that. And I had a lot of mentors around me uh, that, you know, um, you know, just paved the way for me and just uh, made sure I, you know, stayed on the right track. Uh, but through it all, I think God has always had his hand in my life. Mm -hmm. um, ever since, you know what I'm saying? I came out of the womb, like, I always, Felt like I was like re really highly favored with him, and um, he's always smiled down on me. He's always blessed me tremendously, um, with like knowledge and all the gifts he just gives me. I'm able to impact people, um, with, without really even uh trying. You know, sometimes it's like I'm trying to do it um intentionally, intentionally, but uh, just my my aura, I get just being around people, um, it, it helps him, and I'm, that's something I'm thankful for, and so. Uh, a big part of my testimony uh, is when I was in high school. I think uh, it's like my sophomore year, me and a couple of my friends, uh, we got into a bad car wreck, uh, horrendous car wreck, and uh, we were driving out of uh, East Chase, um, the mall in Montgomery, Alabama, which is where I'm from, and uh, had a car came and T-boned us. Our light was green, uh, so we had to right away, and so the, the other guy, he was in the wrong, but um, it was a very big turning point in my life. Uh, the car flipped about 10 times, literally. Um, and we landed upside down. And, you know, I feel like if I didn't, God wasn't watching over me and us, and I didn't have my seatbelt on, uh, I probably would have been definitely gone. Uh, but, you know, that that really showed me the just value life and um, how, how I'm here for a purpose, mm -hmm. for, for sure. And uh, you know, fast forward, I'm here in college. Uh, I'm blessed to be here, and um, I I've joined with two five and one ten. I started going to one ten, you know, early as soon as I first got here because uh, the type of person I am, I'm trying to be close to um, Christ-like people um, to keep me going. Um, you know, and personally, you know, you have to want Christ for yourself, mm -hmm. I believe. But being around. Uh, People that's like-minded, that's what the Bible tells us to do. That's what Jesus tells us to do or um, suggests that we do, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's cool to cool to do that. And uh, after I started going to 110, I started gaining a great relationship with Chris Walker and Jessica Brewster and also Love just to – <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, and also – I got a good relationship with them and also uh, the people that, are, that were already in 2-5. Mm -hmm. And so uh, things just clicked. Um, I think God had that in my, my, his purpose for my life, just being a part of this group. Um, and it's helped me tremendously. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I'm just thankful to be here, you know? Yeah, yeah. for sure. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, before we go to you, yes, sir. you said 110. FCA 25. Yeah. Those are things that people might not know that are watching. So if you could yeah. throw that in your spill of your yeah. <clears throat> so man, being from Memphis, like it's a a lot of people talk about Memphis in a in a kind of negative way, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, my mother and father got divorced when I was five years old, and so you know, being a young black man in Memphis without a father, they always say that you can end up in a few places on drugs, in a gang, in jail, or dead, mm -hmm. right? Um, and my mother. Uh, was not wanting that happen to myself, my older brother, my younger sister. So she threw us into sports, and, and that's where our love for sports started. My mom was a basketball coach our whole childhood, and um, with us all playing sports, that took away the time to, to go to church on Sundays, right? Mm -hmm. um, I guess sports became the God for us mm -hmm. because we're always traveling, we're always going places, we're always doing different things. And so 
I really didn't understand much of a relationship with Jesus. And so what it really was for me is I got saved when I was eight years old because I didn't want to go to hell and I wanted fire insurance, right? And my mom was pinching me and kicking me, telling me to go down there. So I did, but it didn't do anything to me. It didn't change the structure of my life or what I believed or anything. It was just like, cool, I did what everybody else has done. I prayed this prayer and it's all good, Mm -hmm. but my life didn't look any different. And so um, coming to Tennessee, my freshman year, I got involved with FCA, Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Mm -hmm. and we had a guy named James Mitchell, and he basically put his arm around me and said, boy, you're going to get in this Bible, and it's going to change your life. And I was like, okay, we'll see. And he took me to a a camp, which we're going to here in a couple weeks, and I heard a guy talking about Jesus in a way that I'd never heard somebody talk about Jesus before. Mm -hmm. Because, like, where I'm from, like, where we from, there isn't a cute, cuddly, you know, Jesus. Like, that doesn't fit where we come from. Mm -hmm. And he started talking about Jesus in a way that actually made sense to where I was from and what I was going through and how my life was. And I remember saying like, if that's the the Jesus that I'm supposed to follow, then I want that. Mm -hmm. And it was like February 8th, 2008, which I just celebrated my little spiritual birthday a couple of days ago. But (laughs) um, that was when I said yes to Jesus. And I was like, man, this is fun. And so since then, you know, obviously go through college, go through um, several just ups and downs in college. But Mm -hmm. I get done with ball and have a chance to come on staff with FCA and been on staff with FCA now for 14 years mm-hmm. and spent a few years at UT Chattanooga and this is my seventh year back up here and so when I got back here I wanted to basically recreate what we had when I was in college. We had a strong leadership team that a bunch of our friends came from which we call 2-5 which mm-hmm. is our leadership team's gotcha. name now um, and then we work with Athletes in Action here on campus. Mm-hmm. And we've been doing that for a long time here at Tennessee. And so when we got back here, we just kind of rebranded the name and called it 110 uh, from Galatians 110. And so it's been really cool to be a part of seeing the Lord changing hearts and lives where mine was changed and being able to, you know, be in some of the same rooms and some of the same spaces that I saw God move when I was a student athlete Mm -hmm. and now seeing it in other student athletes. And that's really, really cool for me. Yeah, that's awesome. And you said we. I know you gave her full government name, but <laughs> Jess, Jess's other shop here at yeah. Tennessee. We want to shout out Jess because, yeah, Jess, yes, sure. she's always with us with softball, a lot of the yeah. female sports. Yeah. So yeah. shout out Jess. But one thing that you touched on that I thought was really cool was that like sport was your God. Yeah. And I think that speaks to kind of like my journey in the sense that my grandma, similar to yeah, Caleb, yeah. she black church. She does it all. Yeah. Growing up, me and my sister would go with her to church sometimes. And just the older we got, the more sport became our yep. God. And that's yep. where we spent our weekends and especially travel ball. We play Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And I think growing up, I kind of took a step away from it. Right. But coming to Tennessee has like been such a blessing for me because mm-hmm. I have seen like my faith grow so much. And yep. 110 specifically, just like yeah. knowing I'm playing for him and that's the only person who can judge me. Yep. And it just the community that 110 brings with yep. all the different sports is just such a special place because with all the stress that you are under as an athlete now, social media, all the criticism you see, you feel like you're being judged by so many people, Mm -hmm. but there's really only one person who you're playing for at the Mm -hmm. end of the day. All right, so my story is kind of similar to like what y'all was saying, like sport, like God and and that. So it's like, grew up grandparents, like. (laughs) 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 They don't miss church. Everybody, grandparents don't miss church. And my granddad literally was a pastor. Mm. So like I'm there, you're there. I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) I'm there anytime. But like you said, growing up, then you start playing different sports on the weekends that go to these tournaments. But something I just really realized, and really at 110 here in Tennessee, is that like you can do both. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like I feel like a lot of people feel like I'm an athlete, but I can't be a Christian. Mm. But like I realized, like you can do both for sure, and that's like the main thing. And 110, like, really helped me a lot, yeah, like, to get to sure. that point, for yeah. sure. Mm-hmm. And then being an athlete, obviously, we're in college. Mm-hmm. Like, there are so many things besides being an athlete that college has, um, different temptations. And how are, how are you guys able to balance your faith and the celebration of wins and certain things like that? Like, there's obviously people who are watching who want to play at a high level and they're going to have to balance these situations. Mm-hmm. So throughout your guys' time, what have been some challenges and then how do you overcome those challenges? You want to start? You want me to yeah, go? Yeah, I'll start. I think um, one big challenge is just like managing your time. 
um, because, you know, our schedules are pretty hectic and um, your mind, you can get caught up, wrapped up in everything that's going on. So I think it's important to um, take time out in solitude mm -hmm. and really be with the Lord and just um, understand where you are in life yeah. and um, where you where you think he wants you to be and mm -hmm. just pray and just um, just sit back and reflect, I think. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, time time can be very um, diminishing mm -hmm. for a lot of people, but right. I think you have to find those, those spaces where you can just sit back and uh, reflect where you are and see what changes you have to make. Um, and what's not going well in your life, what you need to change and stuff like that. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, I think you kind of hit it on the head. Yeah. To be honest with you, like, <laughs> I feel that, <laughs> <laughs> I feel that, like, so many times people get caught up in the idea that Christians have to be these people that go to church or they look a certain way. Mm -hmm. And really, like, the most important thing is your own journey with God. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, so many people get caught up, like, oh, I go to church, I'm good. Like, I'm mm -hmm. squared off. Like, I don't right. have to worry about nothing. Like, yeah. oh, I'm not going to hell. Like, mm -hmm. you know right. what I'm saying? And they don't, they miss the whole relationship part of it. And that's the whole, like, getting go through your own journey. Yeah. It doesn't look like one set, like, path. Everyone's yeah. journey comes at different times and different mm -hmm. lengths. And it can be easy, it can be hard. Right. Like, right. you know, like, it's nothing to be ashamed of, I think one thing it's always important to know is like even when you're going through a rough patch in life i call it a, a season of pruning shout mm -hmm. out to city hills we talked about this <laughs> in, one, <laughs> in one of the sermons but we call it a season of pruning and so like when trees get pruned they look terrible like right. fruit trees they look really bad but it helps promote growth mm -hmm. and so he basically said that the only way for us to promote like wealth or growth is by going through a rough patch but being able to lean on god through those rough times oh. so whenever that season of you know Oh, like bearing fruit comes it's oh. time for you to bear your fruit mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah. so even when you're getting slammed with a bunch of stuff like knowing that there's going to be that season coming and leaning yeah. and trusting in god because god wouldn't throw you in something that you couldn't handle for sure. god's never going to do that to you mm -hmm. yes indeed so you'll be able to get through everything you just got to trust and lean on him and obviously you got so many amazing like people you know you got to find other christians too and just mm -hmm. talk to yeah. them about it you know so that's been a thing for me that's really helped yeah okay <laughs> thank you caleb Life of a student athlete, we always have to do things, get our bodies right. So we're going to excuse Jordan because he has team yoga. Yes, I do. <laughs> but we'll continue this conversation. But thank you so much for joining us tonight. And thank you for sharing your journey and just being so vulnerable. I know we appreciate it. Everyone watching will appreciate it. But thank you so much. No problem. Thank you, Kozo. That's it. All right. Peace out. <laughs> Okay, so Caleb, you talked about the challenges that you're facing. Mm -hmm. What are some of the things that you tell student athletes when they're going through these temptations, these yeah. challenges in college, and like people who are watching, like yeah. how you can get through these moments? Yeah, I think the one of the biggest things that somebody asked me when I first started doing this was, what do you think is the biggest thing that these college students will face in their journey as student athletes, as grown like young adults trying to figure it out and I said it's the identity piece of it right mm -hmm. because when you get to college this is the first time that a lot of people have been by themselves all right yeah. they've been able to now when you're in college to have all the freedom to do whatever mm -hmm. um, but college also yeah. gives you the options of different things to become mm -hmm. right and so if you don't have a strong relationship with the Lord it's very easy for you to want to be so many different things and that could be at a detriment to the growth that God has for you. And I think that that's one of the, the toughest things for student athletes also, is we gotta understand that football or, or softball or basketball or whatever, it's what we do, it's not who we are. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the biggest thing that we want to teach our student athletes here at Tennessee is that it's just what you do. Mm -hmm. Like it's not who you are. And when you are able to hold it loosely in that sense of like, okay, God, here's my sport, mm -hmm. do whatever you want to with it, whatever you want to with me, then you're able to, if there are disappointments or if it does end shorter or sooner than you thought it should have, mm -hmm. you're able to move forward because yeah. you're like, this was God's anyway. Mm -hmm. right. And what I was doing with it was being able to glorify him for as long as I could. And now once you're done, you're able to move on because it's like, nah, this was just what I did. And that mm -hmm. was for a time. And it's hard to see some athletes that can't get to that point. Yep that 10 years after they're done in college or their pro career, that they are kind of lost because mm -hmm. they haven't come to grips with football or basketball or baseball or softball was just what you did mm -hmm. for whatever time period God had you, right. that wasn't who you are. And mm -hmm. so hopefully we are teaching people to learn and to discover who they are in Christ so that when this is done at some point, they're like, cool, 
it was fun. Mm -hmm. I gave God glory, and now I'm going to do something else in that same regard. So. Wow.